Okay. So we ended here, and we were talking about this as a path curve. The key, the key word is path curve. As you, to, to apply this practically, think about what your, uh, your yoga teacher or your, um, your sister Mary nun, as you're approaching the communion rail, says to you in the Catholic Church. She says, uh, move with the quality of grace. And later when we discuss the kinesthetics of bliss, we're going to see that it's a, a calculus of curvature that determines whether when you move in a certain path curve, you absorb capacitance, which the yoga master calls chi. So that ability to move in a curve where the geometry of your move and the rate of deacceleration or acceleration fits that path curve is therefore charge absorbing. Like if I move like this, where I approach the center of a spiral and a still point, as I moved to the center of that spiral, I felt a little burning thingling at the tip of my baby finger, my finger. I felt that capacitance build because of a path curve. So it's an animation of a perfect path curve. And that is literally how you absorb charge when we study sacred movement. And that's what we will be discussing. We do the kinesthetics of bliss in our hygiene session on Monday. So, so what we want to discuss now is if we can understand practically for ourselves how, how perfect distribution works. If we understand this well, you can invent a new money system. You can invent a new calendar. You can invent a new perfect geometry for housing. All of that discovery of what creates life in both time and space is the discovery of perfected fractality. So what we want to do here is understand in principle, in essence, what is perfected charge distribution for all living systems. So imagine you're a wave. Remember, Einstein got famous because he was able to imagine he was a wave, right? Can you imagine you're a wave? Well, if you're a wave and you're crystallizing in this geometry, which we know is how atoms form, the reason atoms form is because they know how to do this. They know how to nest perfectly, right? That's why the electron is fractal to the nucleus, and that's how atoms start, by making gravity. So as the waves rotate, the amount of rotation in a circle, which we call mass, because it stores inertia, it has to be in perfect balance to the amount of inertia or charge moving towards center. Because the very nature of each wave node, in physics, the name for wave node is called a particle. A particle means a wave node or bubble made of waves. So the reason we have particles in physics is because waves tend to stand or cross at a certain point, and they repeat. They arrive there in time. And so a bit of inertia is stored in the waves of charge. And that's what we call a particle in physics. So the point is that at each ball, at each place where the waves cross, an equal amount of charge must then radiate after compression in all directions equally. And so that means that the amount of inertia that's moving in a circle, which in physics we measure as inertia, and we call it mass, but must be in perfect balance with the amount of inertia moving toward center and toward outside. So there has to be something that creates a centripetal force that prevents the ball, the slipknot of waves, from flying out of the circle. And that centripetal force is caused because the distance to center of each one of these balls in this dodecaecosa nest, which is the geometry of every atom, called E8 in unified field physics, that the distance to center of every single ball is always a multiple of golden mean ratio. And that causes the centripetal experience of acceleration to center of charge, which we call gravity. So the ability of each bubble of mass to be held to that pulling force of charge experience acceleration centripetally called gravity happens because the, if I 
If I take any one of these balls here, dodeci, cosa, dodeci, cosa, and take the x, y, and z value in a rectilinear coordinate system, I get only powers of golden mean ratio for all x, y, and z numbers infinitely in that nest. And that's the physics of what's called E8, in which accounts for all the fundamentals of hard particles and gravity. It's all based on golden mean ratio. So, because the waves can add and multiply to create the adding and multiplying of wave speeds, I get that acceleration of charge or suction of charge towards center called gravity. And I presented radical new evidence in what I call the proof of that, in Golden Mean Info Size Golden Proof, where I showed that the Planck length times golden ratio equals the radii of hydrogen, which we know are golden ratio. So I'm getting this centripetal force. Now, when the waves phase lock into this geometry, they enter into what you might call stillness, or they are locked into place with respect to each other, because the wave length always has to divide evenly into the circumference. And in physics, that's called quantum mechanics. And as we said, that's the origin of sacred geometry. So because the waves cannot move, because they have to hold that ratio, or there would be destructive interference. It's like billiard balls that are all locked into place and cannot move with respect to each other. So each of the balls in the infinite nest of Becky Cosa or Becky Cosa, which is how atoms are made, each ball cannot move with respect to its neighbor. They're locked into a form of stillness. Now, if I lock a million of these balls just exactly touching each other so they can't move with respect to each other. And then I pick one up here and I go click. One ball up, I go click. A billion balls down the row, one ball pops off faster than the speed of light. And if the balls were not touching each other, then it could take a long time for one to pop off at the other end. But if the balls are all touching each other, locked into stillness in place in this geometry, the result is perfect distribution because of zero storage. Which means a billion of these balls in this row, none of them moved. But when I clicked one up here, one popped off at the other end instantly. So each of these balls in between was fully informed of what just happened. But zero power was wasted in getting this inertia from here to the other end. So that's what you feel when you sit very still and you're having rapture, literally, electrically. You feel locked into place in a vice-like grip. You feel like you can't move. And then you feel these crystallizing waves grow around your aura. This is Kundalini 101, right? And this, your aura is doing this. And the billiard balls in the aura, the wave nodes, are doing this. So, perfect distribution of charge arises specifically because of zero storage. Now that is what, that's fractality in essence. Is that what they call zero energy? Is that a general term? Uh, well, what zero point zero energy. Concept? What they refer to as zero point energy is the capacitive charge that you can take from gravity if you lock the balls into a fractal in the way a pine cone gets voltage from gravity called light by being fractal. Specifically, the seeds on the pine cone are capacitors. And by arranging themselves in a fractal, you can measure a voltage from end to end of that pine cone as you can from a fresh chicken egg. And that voltage defines light the ability to get voltage from gravity 